Yeah, what up guys? Rago here from Akite. So we just got into Hatteras, spent the whole winter uh, testing gear down in Florida, hanging out central Florida, riding in the Keys, and now we're up here in the Outer Banks and finally getting some stronger wind. So I had the chance to get out and test the 10 meter Ocean Rodeo Rise. And this kite very much surprised me. So it is kind of higher aspect, but it is a big air kite. And I've been testing quite a few of the higher aspect big air kites. And this one is completely different from the rest. So there's some things that I think are really good about this kite. There are some things that I didn't like about this kite. And I think there is a very specific rider who is going to benefit most from this kite. So we'll break all that down in this video. So with the Ocean Rodeo Rise, what you're getting is a really unique blend of a higher aspect, loftier, big air kite. But where this one really stands out, um, honestly, is the kite loops. So this by far is the best high aspect kite that I have ever kite looped in my life. Um, I have tested quite a few 10 meters now, and depending on the 10 I get on, sometimes I feel good about throwing a loop, sometimes I don't. This is going to sound like one of those uh, sales pitches of old, but I swear, like that 10, it looped like a 7. Uh, I have never felt better about looping a 10 meter, and it's just like, it's like a hammer. I mean, when you pull that trigger, it's over before you realize it, and it was, it was almost reminiscent of how a surf kite loops. And this comes back to, I think, part of design with some of these big air kites. The Rise, it is made to be road lit. Now, I am about 190 pounds, and I took the 10 meter out in probably 22 to 32, so it was variable, very gusty. So when you're riding this in the conditions that you would ride a normal 10 meter in, I think there's a huge advantage to somebody who is trying to work on Kai loops because it is so fast and the catch is so eminent. I think I had a few jumps where I was only like two meters, a meter off the water and the freaking thing caught me. Unreal, just so fast. Um, but what was interesting is the rise when you're riding the 10 meter in the conditions that you might normally ride a 10 meter in, the loops are kind of mild. So very much like a surf kite, very fast. There's a little bit of whip, but I didn't feel like my legs were gonna get thrown. And what this does is it sets up that intermediate rider who's looking to get to competition level up for success because you can get super comfortable with loops and then train a lot of those big air moves um, without all of the G-force and getting as beat up in super strong conditions. Now, with that said, this kite, it is made to be rode powered. So when you are looking to take it to that competition level, when you are that advanced rider, the kite, it handles being lit so well. And this was really noticeable on the water because when the wind was like, 25 knots. Um, I have been out on plenty of nine meter days on other kites in 25. Feels pretty good. This one also felt good, but the kite really came to life and had what a big air rider would be looking for as far as the extremes of kiteboarding once it was getting closer to the 30 something mark. And coming into some of the, the cons, unlike some of the other high aspect kites that I've been testing, like the lithium, or the machine this one is not forgiving so if you're not a more intermediate rider what will happen is it is easier to miss time your jumps and riding in the chop i did find there was a few times where i botched it and only got like a couple feet off the water and that just doesn't happen that often on the other kites like i've mentioned how the lithium or the machine both high aspect big air kites they make bad conditions so easy so i can kind of see in contrast for somebody who is new to big air why there's huge benefits with those kites because it's pretty hard to mess up a good jump and get good height and good loft with them now with the rise as well it has extremely light bar pressure and You'll know that you're powered when you feel a little bit of that bar pressure turn on, but otherwise it's feather light. And I think one of one of the cons of having a kite that is made to be so powered, and I think I think they designed it that way because first of all, when you're riding powered, you're not going to get forearm fatigue because 
the kite doesn't have strong bar pressure, so that has to be intentional for what they made this for. But one of the cons of that, feather light bar pressure, and when I say feather light, I mean, I have not in a very long time been on a kite where mid back roll, I have zero sense of where the kite is. And uh, I accidentally threw some back roll, or, or uh, sorry, I was doing just some simple front rolls actually, and I accidentally pulled the trigger and looped the kite. And because it is so fast and such a hammer-like loop that it caught me off guard and I just got smoked a few times. So it took me probably a good half an hour to get in tune with because there is response, there is feedback. It's just so light and feathery on your fingers that when you first get out there, you're really gonna have to get that dialed in and that will make it harder for a newer rider. So when you're in kind of more sketchy conditions, like where I was in you know, super chop, super gusty wind, I wasn't super comfortable trying a lot of the things that I like to do normally on kites where I have that feedback. Now, as well, um, I think an interesting note is let's say you're somebody who's working on something like a late back roll So one of the pros to having one of the more forgiving big air kites that might not loop as well is With that trick after the loop you kind of usually bring the kite forward or whatever because you need to you need to move the kite So you can resist that something to counter rotate against to throw that roll and Definitely doable with the rise, but you need to get in tune with that feather light bar pressure so you can feel that and place the kite where you want and that was one thing that I struggled with was just uh, having a sense of where the kite was so I could place it where I needed it when I was in the air and not looking at the kite. Uh, now with all that said, more experienced big air rider, those guys they tend to always be watching their kite. I know one of the one of the tips with uh, with kite loops is to always watch that center strut and watch that kite come up. So if you're watching the kite, that's going to definitely be a saving grace with the rise. But that comes back to that beginner versus that intermediate rider. Uh, intermediate riders, man, you are going to love this kite. And I think that's who this is aimed at. So if you're somebody who has been riding for a while and you want to take your loops to the next level, or even if you're somebody who just wants to learn kite loops, I think this is an exceptional kite. If you're that rider who's trying to learn kite loops, you're gonna take that small hit by losing some of that forgiveness and some of that feedback for doing tricks and things, but it is there and you would get acclimated to the kite to the point that you would feel that bar pressure, but there will be a learning curve and you're gonna pay the price. And this is common when you move to more advanced gear. And I would make the case that if you're somebody trying to get to the next level, these trade-offs are well worth it. It's always well worth it when you're going for a specific kite for your discipline. And with the Rise, this is, this has gotta be one of my favorite kites I've ever tried to loop. Um, the, the, you know, I went out there and it was just loop, 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 and a huge smile on my face. Now, other considerations, um, this kite I would say probably has 80% of the loft of some of the other big air high aspect kites that I've flown. So the loft is there and I think at least for me in, in this situation, part of the reason I lost that is because you do get extra loft by working your kite. And because there was less feedback, it wasn't as intuitive for me to work my kite. Um, so I think some of that was part of the loss, but as well, it, it's made to be powered. So with the conditions that I took this 10 meter out in, when I had, so the conditions when I took this 10 meter out, when I had ample wind, when it was uh, up, you know, the upper 20s, 30s, whew, man, yeah, it, I mean, there was feedback. It felt super lofty, felt very similar to the other high aspects. When I was on the lighter end, when it was down to like 25, 22 uh, that loft it just wasn't there compared to the other high aspects that I've used in similar sizes so yeah I think that pretty much sums up the rise it's aimed at that intermediate to advanced rider somebody who wants to learn kite loops easily and then have the right tool to go out in nuking conditions and just freaking get blasted because when you are powered on this kites 
the uh, the loops really come alive. You really start feeling those g-forces from the kite, and it is the right tool for that rider who wants to get to a competitive level or just freaking send it. So. The only person that I think this would not be a great choice for is somebody who was new, or if you're not super comfortable doing all of your rolls with all of your grabs, or maybe you're just starting to do like late back rolls and things like that, it's going to be a bit more of a learning curve because you're making those trade-offs for the very advanced loops. Um, huge plus that I really liked was that light bar pressure is going to save you that forearm burn when you're out riding in lit conditions but you are taking the hit with less feedback. So if you guys got any questions on the rise, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you later.